Okay, good morning, guys. Um, uh, today's lecture is going to be rather short. Um, I have a COVID related appointment at 1230. So uh, I don't think I'll be able to go longer than 30 minutes. So um, last time we learned another proof technique called mathematical induction. Uh, this technique will pop up every now and then um, throughout the rest of the course. So just keep that technique in mind. Um, so today, um, we're going to talk about number theory. So the branch of mathematics Noted to the study of the integers is called number theory. Okay. So number theory is one of the oldest branches of mathematics. Um, and it is also one of the deepest. Um, in fact, I would personally consider number theory one of the, um, the richest and, uh, yeah, one of the richest branches of mathematics. And people that call themselves number theorists or academics that study number theory have to spend years and years just learning um, the techniques of the field in order to study it. Um, with that being said, a lot of uh, statements in number theory are, are fairly simple to understand. They're just very difficult to do. Now, we're not going to do any of the really technical results in number theory, not even close, but we are going to introduce some fundamental definitions and proof ideas um, for various number theoretic statements, very simple computer theoretic statements. And I think the best way to introduce this is with the notion of divisibility. So if, a and B are integers. If A not equal to zero, we say A divides B. Should I introduce the notation yet? No. You see that A divides B when written A bar B if there exists an integer C. Know that um, E is equal to A times C. Okay. Um, in this case, we say that A is a factor of B. So this is 
the definition of A dividing B. If A does not divide B, we write A bar with a cross bar like that. Okay. Make sure you have that down. All right, so this is the fundamental definition that we're going to work with today. And throughout the section on number theory, we're going to encounter the visibility throughout most of the stages. Okay. So say that A divides B if there exists some multiple C such that B is equal to A times SC. It's that simple. Okay. All right, so now that we have this definition of divisibility, let's look at a theorem. So here. Okay, so if A divides B and A divides C, then A divides B plus C. Okay. All right, so we can do this with a direct proof. Proof isn't that long, so I'm going to go ahead and use the scratch word principle over here. So we're going to use a direct proof. Okay. So, in a direct proof, we assume the hypothesis. So, A divides B and A divides C. Okay. Now, as before, in our other basic definitions, uh, even in odd integers, we make an assumption and we can use a definition, right? So if A divides B, then there exists some in integer, um, I don't know, call it K, which we already have a C right there. So that's such that B is equal to A times K. I'll call that A, A1 or something. And if A divides C, then C is equal to uh, A times K2 or something like that, where K1 and K2 are integers. Now, um, it's important when you're writing your proof that you specify where these, these uh, numbers came from. Right? It's very important that you always specify where they come where they came from. I saw in a few examples on your exams that um, in writing your proofs, you often forgot to say where the, the new variables came from. Okay? What were they elements? Okay, so now um, we make it made an assumption, we use definition. Now let's look at um, we want to show that A divides B plus C. Well, if you look at this, B plus C is equal to A times K1 plus A times K2, right? But here there's a common factor of A. So that's like saying A times K1 plus K2. Now this thing, that's an integer and that's an integer. Um, this means that A divides B plus C, since that thing is an integer.
Okay. So that's a pretty straightforward scratch board there. Again, assume the hypothesis, use the definition of that and that here, and then look at what we want to show. We want to show that that is a multiple of A. So we look at that, we use the definition there, factor out the A, and we see that A times this integer is that. So it satisfies the definition of being divisible by A. So, um, let's look at the proof now. Uh, so it's a direct proof, so we don't have to say that we're doing a direct proof. If we were using an indirect method, like proper positive contradiction, we would always have to tell the reader at the very beginning that we're doing so. Um, again, I noticed on the exam that some of you were not um, saying by way of contradiction or by way of proper positive. Okay? Um, so keep that in mind when you're writing the proofs. If this is a direct proof, we don't have to do that, so I'll just say let A divide B and A divide C. There's our assumption, our hypothesis. So now we use definition. Then by definition, During this, integers k1, k2, so that um, b is equal to a times k1. And C is equal to A times K2. Okay. So now we just look at the sum here. So we could say something like it follows. That a, I'm sorry, b plus c is equal to a times k1 plus a times k2, which is equal to a times k1 plus k2. Okay, and we just finish it off with the extent k1 plus k2 is integer a divides b plus c by definition. So, where is, uh, uh, what was I going to do? Oh, now, that shouldn't look too much different than what we've been doing. Right? I guess it doesn't look too hard, right? It's just, as long as you're familiar with the definition, you should be okay. Now, this is going to gradually get more and more um, uh, dense, the number of definitions that you're going to need. But it's always important that whenever you encounter a new definition in mathematics, especially in your higher level courses, write, write those definitions down on a piece of paper next to you. Or have like a note card with that definition because the definitions are key. If you don't know the definition, you, you won't be able to prove it. Um, further, um, 
you should always be able to give an example of something satisfying the definition and something that isn't satisfying the definition on your own. That, that kind of thing is necessary before you can even start groups. Um, so, okay, this is the, the finishing the group. And this is kind of nice, right? Like it, it makes sense. Like for example, um, like uh, so, two divides six, and two divides uh, twenty-four. And this theorem guarantees that two divides twenty-four plus six it guarantees it. And does it? It does, right? Two divides thirty. So we got it. This is just an example of the statement of that theorem. Okay, so let's do another one. So maybe. So. If um, A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. Okay. So let's see what we here. Again, we can prove this directly. Um, so let's say, um, okay, without any of the scratch work, but I encourage you to kind of write, look at this later and use scratch work and then write it on your own. But without any of the scratch work, um, let's say, let A divide B and B divide C. Okay, so we make our we assume the hypothesis. So next thing, we need to use our definition. So then by definition, um, there exists integers A1, A2. You could use any variable, any letters you want. I just happen to be thinking of that today. Um, you could use N and M, doesn't matter. In fact, let's see what I do. Let's just say, then there exists uh, integers N and M, so that P is equal to A times N and uh, C is equal to um, P times M. All right. So we've used the definition. Now we want to show that A divides C somehow. In other words, we want to show that C is a multiple of an uh, integer multiple of A. So um, maybe like hence C is equal to B times M, but B is an integer multiple of A. Like that. And then finally, just kind of shuffle things around. All right. So, since n times m is an integer, a divides c by definition. Is 
Okay. And there is a comma right there. We can't see. Not so bad, right? These should be on a scale from one to ten, ten being really hard, one being really easy. These should be like a two and a half, three ish, maybe three and a half at the hardest. Um, but again, it's just using the definitions like we were before, just in a different way. Okay. So maybe let's say. No, I think because I have to drive about 20 minutes to my, uh, my appointment, that'll be it for the game. However, um, maybe I'll leave up a, a problem for you to think about on your own. So if A divides B, then A divides B times C for all integer C. Maybe you can kind of prove that one on your own and then we can talk about it next. Okay. Now, um, if your grade has not been posted for exam one, please email me your exam again. All right, so the only people that don't have grades up right now are people where I couldn't find your exams in my email in inbox. So please email me those again, just in case. Um, I will post solutions after everyone has gotten me their exam. And then after everyone has got their exam and the solutions are posted, then we can schedule one-on-one um, uh, -on -one, uh, meetings, Zoom meetings, where we discuss your exam and what went wrong. Okay. And then also, um, I plan on having a, like a, a bonus assignment that can add points to your first exam. So. I haven't finished writing it up yet, but it should be where you can earn back like maybe 15 points if you complete this bonus assignment. Okay, well, I have to run uh, across town in the, to this clinic for an appointment. So that will be it for the day. Um, and again, please email me your exam if your grade is not appearing on Blackboard. Thank you, Professor. Best of luck. Thank you. Stay safe.